What's up, people? Great soundtrack. If you don't have it, your collection is just not quite complete. I love this TV show. I miss it. Every week, a different story, different characters. Ah, nobody seems to like that, but I do. Let's see, we're up to chapter 19 of Mosiah. Join this. Got like three beers left. It ought to be enough. Let's see. Alma's a damn long uh, book. <laughs> uh, <laughs> something like 43 chapters, somewhere 42, 43 chapters, or maybe more, I think. Oh, sure. 63. 63 chapters in Alma. Yeah. Chapter 19. Suddenly I don't feel so great. <laughs> ah, the one, a wonderful conversion. Abish, the Lamanite woman, don't forget her. She's a special thing. Uh, Lamanite king and queen espouse the faith. <laughs> Ammon establishes the churches of Ishmael. In our last thrilling chapter, uh, Ammon explained to King uh, Lamoni uh, that, yeah, all along they've been believing in the Great Spirit. That's God. And he went catatonic. <laughs> fell to the floor. Kind of did what it... Uh, uh, Alma Jr. did when the angel spoke to him in a voice of thunder. <laughs> All right, let's get this underway. Verse 1. And it came to pass uh, that after two days and two nights they were about to take his body uh, and lay it in a sepulcher, which they had made for the purpose of burying their dead. Two. Now the queen, who I don't think they ever name her, but they name a, some servant woman, because uh, <laughs> she's a Christian in B.C. 90. <laughs> uh, now the queen, having heard of the fame of Ammon, therefore, <coughs> ooh, damn, she sent and desired that he should come in unto her. Pay her visit. Three. It came to pass <sighs> that Ammon did as he was commanded, and went in unto the queen, and desired to know what she would that he should do. Four. And she said unto him, The servants of my husband have made it known unto me that thou art a prophet of a holy God. It says, a holy God. And yet God is still capitalized. Uh, and that thou hast power to do many mighty works in his name, except saving women and children that are thrown into a fucking fire. Yeah, he has to stand there and go, uh, no, I'm going to pass on this one. Got to make sure there's enough uh, of the force left to get my ass out of danger. <laughs> Five! Therefore, if this is the case, I would that ye should go in and see my husband, 
for he has been laid upon his bed for the space of two days and two nights. And some say that he is not dead, but others say that he is dead and that he stinketh. And that he ought to be placed in the sepulchre. But as for myself, to me he doth not stink. Well, you're his wife. I mean, it's nice you think that way. Six. Now, this was what Ammon desired. For he knew that, the king, that King Lamoni was under the power of God. <sighs> Just because. He knew that the dark veil of unbelief, unbelief was being cast away from this man. <sighs> and the light which did light up his mind, which was the light of the glory of God, which was a marvelous light of his goodness. Yay! <laughs> this light, this light that they keep talking about! God damn! Verse 6 is long! It's all about this marvelous light. Uh, 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 <laughs> I lost my place. Which did light of his mind, which was a light of the glory of God, which was a marvelous light of his goodness. Yay! This light had infused such joy into his soul, the cloud of darkness having been dispelled, and that the light of everlasting life was lit up in his soul. Yay! He knew that this had overcome his natural frame, and he was carried away in God. Ah. Seven. Therefore, what the queen desired of him was what he only desired, was his only desire. Therefore, he went in to see the king according to the queen according as the queen had desired him. And he saw the king, and he knew that he was not dead. Eight. And he said unto the queen, He is not dead, but he sleepeth. Is that Luke? Which one's uh, with the little girl, you know, and Jesus goes, uh, She's not dead, she's sleeping. takes her hand and she gets up. You're going to see that here. I remember this part. It was almost something. <laughs> he is not dead, but he sleepeth in God. And on the morrow, after two days, and in a third day, I rip every fucking thing off. On the morrow, he shall rise again. Therefore, bury him not. Wait a third day. It's sort of a ritual thing. <laughs> Nine. And Ammon said unto her, Believest thou this? And she said unto him, I have had no witness save thy word, and the word of our servants. Nevertheless, I believe that it shall be according as thou hast said. In other words, yes. But kind of tentative. <laughs> Ten. And Ammon said unto her, Blessed art thou, because of thy exceeding faith. I say unto thee, woman, there has not been such great faith among all the people of the Nephites. 11. <sighs> and it came to pass that she watched over the bed of her husband from that time, even until that time on the morrow, which Ammon had appointed that he should rise. 12.
12. Mm. It's nice when it's cold. And it came to pass that he arose according to the words of Ammon. Uh, and as he rose, he stretched forth his hand unto the woman, the queen. Let's see if they ever name her. I don't think they do. Nope. All right. He stretched forth his hand unto the woman and said, Blessed be the name of God, and blessed art thou. So her name is Thou. Isn't that nice? <coughs> there it is. Thirteen. For as sure as thou livest, must be her name. You know, my grandfather had a, nick, a pet name for my grandma. It was Wife. I shit you not. He was a preacher. Wife. It's about time to get vittles on the table. <sighs> yeah, thou. <laughs> For as sure as thou livest, well, it can't be your name, it isn't capitalized. Behold, I have seen my Redeemer, but he gets capitalized. And he shall come forth and be born of a woman, and he shall redeem all mankind who believe on his name. Now, when he had said these words, his heart was swollen within him, and he sunk again with joy. <laughs> and the queen also sunk down, being overpowered by the spirit. So they both vapor-locked, collapsed. <laughs> this is some dramatic shit. I'm being overcome right now. With the spirit. <laughs> the spirits. Uh, Fourteen. Now Ammon, seeing the spirit of the Lord, poured out according to his prayers upon the Lamanites, his brethren, who had been the cause of so much mourning among the Nephites, or among all the people of God, because of their iniquities and their... Uh, traditions, uh, he fell upon his knees and began to pour out his soul in prayer and thanksgiving to God for what he had done for his brethren, and he was also overpowered with joy, and thus they, all three, had sunk to the earth. <laughs> I think that's kind of comical. I'm sorry. That's just... that's. <laughs> Fifteen. Now, when the servants of the king had seen that they had fallen, <laughs> now, when the servants of the king had seen that they had fallen, <laughs> they also began to cry unto God. For the fear of the Lord had come upon them also. For it was they who had stood before the king and testified unto him concerning the great power of Ammon. I mean, just think, this if they did this out in a public area, it'd just like look like Jonestown for a while. <laughs> All these people overcoming the spirit. Sixteen. And it came to pass, as we knew it would. <sighs> that they did call on the name of the Lord in their might, even until they had fallen to the earth. Save it were one of the Lamanitish women, whose name was Abish. And don't forget that name, Abish, because she got a name and the queen didn't. She, having been converted unto the Lord for many years, 
She had like one of those gold cards. <laughs> Get out of hell free cards. <sighs> yeah, uh, yeah, 17. Uh, Thus having been converted to the Lord, and never having made it known, therefore, when she saw that all the servants of Lamoni had fallen to the earth, and also her mistress, the queen, <laughs> and the king, and Ammon, lay prostrate upon the earth, she knew that it was the power of God, and supposing that this and supposing that this opportunity, by making known unto the people what had happened among them, that <coughs> that by beholding this scene, it would cause them to believe in the power of God. Therefore, she ran forth from house to house, making it known unto the people. And they began to assemble themselves together unto the house of the king. And there came a multitude. And to their astonishment, they beheld the king and the queen and their servants prostrate, prostrate upon the earth. And they all lay as though they were dead. And they also saw Ammon. And behold, he was a Nephite. That meant he was white. 19. And now the people began to murmur among themselves, some saying that it was a great evil that had come upon them, or be upon the king and his house, because he had suffered that the Nephite should remain in the land. 20. And others rebuked them, saying, the king hath brought this evil upon his house, because he slew his servants, who had had their flocks scattered at the waters of Sebus. 21. And they were also rebuked by those men who had stood at the waters of Sebus, and scattered the flocks, which belonged to the king, for they were angry with Ammon because of the number which he had slain of their brethren at the waters of Sebus while defending the flocks of the king. 22. Now, one of them, whose brother had been slain with the sword of Ammon, being exceeding angry with Ammon, drew his sword and went forth that he might let it fall upon Ammon. He's going to drop his sword. Oh, no, I get it. Uh, to slay him! And as he lifted the sword to smite him, behold, he fell dead. <sighs> Twenty... Yeah, like all those people that fell dead around Peter. Possibly even Judas. 23. Now, we see that Ammon could not be slain, for the Lord had said unto Mosiah, uh, his father, I will spare him, and it shall be unto him according to thy faith. Therefore Mosiah trusted him, unto the Lord. And it came to pass that when the multitude beheld that the man had fallen dead, who lifted the sword to slay Ammon, fear came upon them all, and they durst not put forth their hands to touch him, or any of those who had fallen. And they began to marvel again among themselves what could be the cause of this great power, or what all these things could mean. 25.
and it came to pass that they were there were many among them who said that Ammon was the great spirit. And others said he was sent by the great spirit. 26. But others rebuked them all, saying that he was a monster who had been sent from the Nephites to torment them. 27. And there were some who said that Ammon was sent by the great spirit. Yeah, they're saying it again. To afflict them because of their iniquities. And that is, and that it was the great spirit that had always attended to the Nephites, who had ever <coughs> delivered them out of the hands, their hands, and they said that it was this great spirit who had destroyed so many of their brethren, the Lamanites. 28. And thus the contention began to be exceeding sharp among them. And while they were thus contending, the woman servant who had caused the multitude to be gathered together came, and when she saw the contention which was among the multitude, she was exceeding sorrowful even unto tears. It made her cry. Those meanies. 29. Uh. And it came to pass that when she, uh, that she went and took the queen by the hand, that perhaps she might raise her from the ground. And as soon as she had touched her hand, she arose and stood upon her feet and cried with a loud voice, saying, O oh, blessed Jesus! Who has saved me from an awful hell? O oh, blessed God, have mercy on this people. <clears throat> and this is uh, B.C. 90. About. B.C. as in before Christ. Yeah, all right. It's archaic. It should be B.C.E. <sighs> Who the fuck was that? Oh. Uh, yeah, uh, she cried out with a loud voice. Thirty! And when she had said this, she clasped her hands, being filled with joy, speaking many words which were not understood. Ah, so she went speaking in tongues. She spoke many words which were not understood. Yeah, the Mormons don't do that anymore, but it's in their book. Oops. Better start speaking in tongues, you LDS guys. <laughs> or you're breaking the rules. <laughs> speaking many words which were not understood. And when she had done this, she took the she took the king, Lamoni, who at least has a name, by the hand, and behold, he arose and stood upon his feet again after three days in a coma. He fell back again for a little while. <sighs> he stood on his feet. Good. That way he doesn't look silly. <laughs> 31. And he immediately, seeing the contention among his people, went forth and began to rebuke them and to teach them the words which he had heard from the mouth of Ammon. And as many as heard his words believed and were converted unto the Lord. 32. But there were many among them who would not hear his words. Therefore, they went their way. 33. Came to pass...
glass beer. I think this will do it. I wonder what I'm going to get next. This is all right. It just isn't very good if it starts to get warm on you, though. It's great when it's cold. In some beers, it doesn't matter. Thirty-three, <coughs> and it came to pass that when Ammon arose, he also administered unto them. So he was laid out longer than all of them, except, of course, uh, Lamoni. He just needed a little siesta after his coma. It's pretty realistic, isn't it? Just like you know, people act this way. And they talk this way. And they believe all kinds of crazy shit. And it came to pass that when Ammon arose, he administered unto them, and also did all the servants of Lamoni. I guess they all woke. Let's get up. We're, we're all awake again. <laughs> Born again. They died and they came back. They were born again. He came out of a coma. <laughs> Caused by religious hysterics. <laughs> and they did declare, and, and they did all declare unto the people the self-same thing, that their hearts had been changed. That they had no more desire to do evil, because they were fucking evil before that. Right? All the time, and everything they did. I guess, I mean, these are pretty one-dimensional characters. <laughs> yeah. They, just, they got tired of twisting their mustache and cackling and evicting widows. <laughs> we're sick of being evil. It sucks. Uh, 34. And behold, many did declare unto the people that they had seen angels. They'd seen angels and had conversed with them, and thus they had told them things of God and of his righteousness. I welcome an angelic visit, visit at any time. Honestly. I would be receptive of that. Uh, angels. Thirty-five. It's almost at the end of the chapter. And it came to pass um, that there were many that did believe in their words. And as many as did believe were baptized, and they became a righteous people. And they did establish a church among them. Uh, 36. And thus the work of the Lord did commence among the Lamanites. Thus the Lord did begin to pour out His Spirit upon them, and we see that His arm is extended to all people who will repent and believe on His name. And that's it for 19. See you guys in chapter 20. Peace. The fuck out. Buy this soundtrack so I don't get DMCA'd. Have a wonderful, whatever the fuck it is you might be having. <laughs>